Okay, so the first problem that we are going to go over is uh, going to be um, 7 times parentheses x minus 4 is equal to 15. And this practice problem should help you guys with problem C, question 1 for your homework. And this is not a fractional equation. This is just a regular equation like you guys have been doing since you were, you know, 12 years old. Um, but it's good to just review this stuff so that you don't get confused when you go into the more complicated material. Okay, so the way that we would do this one, okay, is going to be, first of all, we see here we've got a 7 on the outside of the parentheses, and then we have this minus sign in between the parentheses. So what we're going to start off doing is we need to, right off the bat, distribute that 7 to the inside of our parentheses. Okay, so when, when we distribute that 7 to the x, we're going to get 7 times x, 7x, minus, when we distribute that 7 to the 4, we get 28. So we have 7x minus 28, and that's equal to 15. Awesome. Well, now what, what do we need to do? Well, we need to isolate the x on the left side, okay? So what we do is we add 28 to both sides of our equation. So we do plus 28 on the left, and we do plus 28 on the right. On the left side of our equation, those 28s, minus 28 plus 28, is just 0. So they cancel out. And then on the right side of our equation, 15 plus 28 is going to be, if I pull out my calculator here, 15 plus 28 is going to be 43. Awesome. And now we still have this 7x on the left, so we know that 7x is equal to 43. And now the last part of our equation that we need to do is we need to isolate this x all by itself. So what we got to do is we got to get this 7 off of the x. And the way we do that is we divide by 7 on the left, and we divide by 7 on the right. So on the left, 7 divided by 7 is 1, so they cancel. And then on the right, we have 43 over 7. So our final answer is going to be x equals 43 over 7. Okay, this question is designed to be extremely similar to question number one, part D on your homework. Okay, so the question that I'm giving you is we have an equation here, 3x minus 4 plus 5x equals 28. Okay, now this is a little bit harder than the previous problem. We see here, right, I've got a 3x and I've got a 5x too, so I have two different x's floating around. And somehow what I need to do is i got to somehow find a way to simplify them so that I only have 1x. Okay? But if you remember from our polynomial unit, 3x and 5x are like terms. Okay? They have the same variable, x, and each variable has the same exponent. So I can combine them, and I get 3x plus 5x is going to give me 8x minus 4 and that's equal to 28. Okay. Well, now what I need to do is I need to try and work out a way that I can isolate this x all by itself. So what I do is I have this minus 4 here. I need to get rid of that minus 4. So I add 4 to the left side, and I add 4 to the right side. Now, a negative 4 plus 4 is equal to 0, so they cancel, and 28 plus 4 is equal to 32. Okay, so I get 8x equals 32, and I do, now what I need to do is I have that 8x, but I've got to isolate that x all by itself. So somehow I need to get rid of that 8 that's attached to the x. So what I do in order to do that is I divide by 8 on the left, and the 8s cancel. 8 divided by 8 is just 1, and then on the right I divide by 8, and 32 divided by 8 is 4, so I end up with a final answer of x is equal to 4. Okay, this question that I'm about to give you is supposed to be very similar to question number two, part A, on your homework. Okay, so if you can do this problem with me, if you go through this video and you watch the way we do this problem, it should be very, very similar to what you're going to need to do on question two, part A, on your homework. 
Okay, so the question that I'm going to give you is 6x over 4 minus 7 all equal to 4. Okay, now there's a few different ways that I can do this. Okay, notice here I've got this minus 7 floating around. I think the easiest thing that we can do is we can add 7 to both sides. Okay, so if I add 7 to the left and I add 7 to the right, then I've got a minus 7 plus a 7. Well, that's just 0, so they cancel. And then I've got 4 plus 7. Well, that's just 11. Okay, and now keep in mind, I still have this 6x over 4 floating out on the left here, so I get 6x over 4 equals 11. Now, right, I've got, I've got to do some of our fractional work that we did in class today, okay? And I'm looking for a way that I can somehow cross-multiply to find a solution. The problem is that when we cross-multiply, usually it's in the form of A over B equals C over D. Okay, the issue here is that we have nothing over this 11, but that's actually pretty easy, easily remedied, okay? That 11 is really equal to 11 over 1, okay? So now we have this set up in a form that we can cross-multiply. And what I do is I cross-multiply the 11 and the 4, and I cross-multiply the 6x and the 1. So I get 6x times 1 is equal to 11 times 4. Awesome. Well, now I just simplify on the left. 6x times 1 is just 6x. And then 11 times 4 is 44. Okay. So now, again, I'm trying to isolate that x all by itself. So I divide by 6 on the left. 6 over 6 is 1. I divide by 6 on the right. Okay, 44 over 6. And I'm not quite done yet. I can still simplify 44 over 6. They're both even numbers. So if they're both even numbers, if I divide 44 divided by 2, and if I divide 6 divided by 2, I get 44 over 2 is 22, over 6 over 2 is 3. So my final answer is going to be x equals 22 over 3. If you left your answer as just 44 over 6, it wouldn't have been incorrect but it wouldn't have been in simplest form. Okay, so that's why I simplify the fraction with that one extra step at the end. This video portion is supposed to help you with question number two, part C, on your homework. And the equation that I've given you is 3x over 6 minus 2x over 3 equals 5 fourths. So right off the bat here, I have a little bit of a problem. Okay. Remember what we talked about in class, I can only cross multiply when I have a fraction equal to a fraction. Here, I have a fraction minus a fraction equal to a fraction. So I'm not ready to cross multiply yet. I have to get this left portion of my equation all turned into one fraction. So the way that I do that is I need to find a common denominator for both terms and then simplify. Well, here I see that I've got a 3 and I've got a 6 as my denominators. The easiest thing that I can do is I can somehow try and turn that 3 into a 6. And so the way that I would do that is I would multiply by 2 on the bottom. And don't forget what I do to the bottom, I need to also do to the top. So I need to also multiply by a 2 on the top. And so I get 3x over 6 minus 2 times 2x is equal to 4x, and then 2 times 3 is equal to 6, all equal to 5 fourths. Awesome. But now what I have to do, okay, is I found my common denominator. I need to do one more step. I've got to simplify. So I do 3x minus 4x is equal to minus x all over 6. Remember, when I subtract fractions, my denominator stays the same. It's only the numerators that I subtract. And all of that is equal to 5 fourths. And now I have a fraction, a single fraction, equal to a single fraction. Here I had two fractions equal to a single fraction. 
Here I have a single fraction equal to a single fraction. I know I'm ready to cross multiply now. So I do cross multiply the 5 and the 6, and I cross multiply the negative x and the 4, and I get negative x times 4 is equal to 6 times 5. Great. Well, now what I have to do is I've got to simplify this expression. I've got negative x times 4, that's equal to minus 4x. And then 6 times 5 is equal to 30. Great. But just like I've always done with fractions, uh, or with equations, pardon me, just like I've always done with equations, I need to isolate that x all by itself. So I divide by negative 4 on the left side, and I divide by negative 4 on the right side, and the negative 4s cancel, and I get x is equal to 30, negative 30 over 4. Okay. And one thing that I could do to simplify this further is 30 and 4 are both even numbers. So if I divide 30 by 2, so if I divide 30 by 2, and if I divide 4 by 2, I end up with a final answer of negative 15 over 2. And that would be my answer in simplest form. This question is supposed to help you with question number 2, part D, on your homework. This question is supposed to help you with question number 2, part D, on your homework. And the equation is going to be 3x plus 1 6 is equal to 12 over 5. Okay, and remember my goal here with these fractional equations is to reduce my equation into a fraction equal to a fraction. The problem here is I have 3x plus a fraction equal to a fraction, so I'm not ready to cross multiply yet. But one thing that I can do to make this easier is this 3x here isn't a fraction right now, but I can make it a fraction by simply writing it as 3x over 1. Okay. And now what do I need to do? Well, now I have two fractions equal to a fraction, so I'm closer than uh, closer to my goal than what I had before, but I still need to reduce these two fractions here into one fraction. So the way I need to do that is I have to find a common denominator for each of these. Well, on the left, I have 3x over 1, and on the right, I have 6. So if I could somehow turn this 1 into a 6, I would have a common denominator between the two terms, and I'd be really happy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by a 6 on the denominator of my left term, and I'm going to multiply by a 6 on top as well. Remember, what I do to the denominator, I also have to do to the numerator. So I get 18x over 6 plus 1 6 is equal to 12 over 5. Okay. So what I need to do now is I got to add them together. So I get 18x plus 1 over 6 equal to 12 over 5. And now I have a fraction equal to a fraction, so I can cross multiply. So I can cross multiply the 12 and the 6, and I can cross multiply the 18x plus 1 and the 5, and I get 18x plus 1 times 5 is 5 times parentheses 18x plus 1 equal to 6 times 12 is going to be 72. Okay, great. But before I'm ready to continue, what I have to do here is I have to take that 5 and I've got to distribute it to the 18x. And I also need to distribute it to the 1. Okay, so let's go up here a little bit over to the side. 5 times 18x, well, I don't really know what that is off the top of my head. So why don't we use our calculator? And what I need to do is I need to multiply 5 times 18. So 5 times 18 is going to give me 90. So I end up with 90x, and then 5 times 1 is going to give me 5, so I get 90x plus 5 equal to 72. Great. Okay, but I still need to isolate that x all by itself. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to subtract 5 from the left, and I'm going to subtract 5 from the right. So I get 90x equal to 72 minus 5 is going to give me 90x equal to 67. Great. Okay. And then I get x 
is equal to, well, I need to somehow isolate that x all by itself, so I divide by 90 on the left, and I divide by 90 on the right. The 90s cancel on the left, and I end up with x is equal to 67 over 90. Hi, guys. This is going to be very similar to question number two, part E on your homework. Okay, and the equation that I've given you is going to be 5x over 4 is equal to 9 fifths. Okay, so let's get started. Right off the bat here, we're really lucky, right? Because I see immediately I've got a fraction, a single fraction equal to a single fraction. So I really don't even need to do anything for this problem. Um, as far as finding a common denominator and then simplifying them and all that stuff that makes it so hard. So right off the bat, I'm really happy because I can cross multiply right away. So I do cross multiply, I get 9 times 4 equal to 5x times 5. Okay, so I do 5 times 5x equal to 9 times 4. Awesome. Okay, and then 5 times 5x. Well, that's just going to be equal to 25x. And then 9 times 4, well, that's equal to 36. Sweet. Okay. And then I need to isolate this x all by itself. So I divide by 25 on the left, and I divide by 25 on the right, and I get x equal to 36 over 25. Final answer. So this problem that we're going to do is going to be very similar to your homework, question number two, part F. Okay, so my equation that I'm going to give you is going to be y over minus 2 plus y, all equal to 7 over 9. Okay, now again, I'm really happy here, right, because I have a single fraction equal to a single fraction. I don't need to worry about finding a common denominator and combining my fractions. So this is really good. I can cross multiply right off the bat. And so I get 7 times negative 2 plus y. And then I also cross multiply y times 9. And I get 7. So I get, sorry, my, my marker's not writing. So I get 7 times negative 2 plus y equal to y times 9 on the right. Now I need to distribute the 7 to the minus 2 and to the y. So I get 7 times a minus 2 is going to be minus 14, plus 7 times y is just 7y, okay? And then y times 9 is 9y. Awesome, okay? And now I just solve it like a regular equation. So I subtract 7y from the left, and I get plus 7y minus 7y is equal to 0, so they cancel. And then I also need to subtract 7y from the right. So 9y minus 7y is equal to 2y. And then I still have this minus 14 left over, so I get minus 14 equal to 2y. Well, now I need to divide by 2 on both sides, so I get here I have minus 14 equal to 2y. I divide by 2 on the right, the 2's cancel, and I divide by 2 on the left, Okay, and I get minus 7 is equal to 